Hello, my name is Darrenson Martin and welcome back to my channel. So we are all in the same boat, learning English. Some of us do that to take a language test like IELTS or TOEFL, others just learn English for themselves. But regardless of your language goal, in this journey it is vital to learn new words. Words are essential for expressing our ideas. It would be quite difficult to be eloquent and uh, straightforwardly tell a person what you have to say if you just didn't know words or if you used the same words all over again without expanding to synonyms or to paraphrasing. Today in this video we are going to talk about two things. First, what size of vocabulary you need to have to score high in IELTS or TOEFL. And second, what kind of things you can do in order to improve your vocabulary, expand it and just start speaking more fluently. So, in general, each level of English corresponds to a certain vocabulary size and thus scores of IELTS and TOEFL do the same thing. They correspond to a certain vocabulary size. Here on the screen, I'm going to show you how these sizes are correlated. So, we start with A1 level. That is the novice level, the level of beginners who are just starting out. At this point, it is okay to know around 500 words. Then on the next level, A2, that is the pre-intermediate level, you are expected to know around 1000 words. Moving up, we have B1 level, that is the intermediate. And here you're already at the 2000 words level. Then we have B2, which is the upper intermediate, and we jump to 4000 words. At C1 level, that is the advanced level, we are at 800 and then at C2 the proficiency level when you are uh, on the same level as professors for example who conduct lectures at universities that is uh, around 16,000 words. But I also found another study that shows slightly different results. So here on the screen you will see the chart for TOEFL scores and the chart for IELTS scores. And you can see that on the charts numbers are higher. For IELTS, for example, uh, 8.5 or 9.0, it is already required to know around 25,000 words and I'm more inclined to believe the second study with the higher numbers because it was taken from the representative sample of thousands of people who took the test. It's like 30,000 people uh, who took the test and shared their results so that they could be put into this table. Right, so now we know what is the approximate vocabulary size for different English levels and uh, depending on what uh, target score you aim for at your language test, you already know how many words you should know. Of course, that's an approximate number. And I always say that it is the best to know your starting and ending points in terms of any journey. With English language and especially with vocabulary sizing, that's the same thing. You equally need to understand where you're at right now before you start moving to another target point. So to understand where you're at, you definitely can take several vocabulary tests. I will link down below in the description box some of the tests that are completely free and that you can take online to measure and gauge the size of your vocabulary. By the way, I'm also going to take this test after that video and I will also film that so you can watch uh, as I'm taking the test. Remember, I'm not a native, I am Russian and my IELTS score uh, on IELTS Academic is 8.0. So we'll see if my score correlates to the number of words that I know. To learn more about that, you can click the info card there and watch the video where I'm taking the test. After taking the test, you already know what your current level is and your next question is, but where do you get words for learning? So there are two ways. You can either get words from word lists or you can try to learn words from context. Now I'm going to cover and discuss both of these methods. So first, there are word lists created by language enthusiasts who brought together thousands of words united by several attributes. For example, there are two quite famous Oxford word lists, Oxford 3000 and 5000. How do they work? So Oxford 3000 is the list of core 3000 words that are used daily in the English language. 
and that every learner of English must know. They are aligned to the international standards of uh, English levels and they correspond to levels A1 to B2. So they're pretty basic and every one of us must know them. Then goes Oxford 5000. That is a list of words for advanced learners and it includes 2000 more additional words and it corresponds to the levels from B2 to C1. So that's already advanced and you can use that list to expand your vocabulary. The next two are academic word list and general service list. So the general service list is a list of roughly 2000 words and it was created by an English teacher and researcher who worked extensively in India in 1990s. The words there were taken to represent the most frequent English words and were taken from the corpus of written English. Then goes the academic word list. This list is much shorter, that's just 570 words. And it was created by a linguist from the School of Linguistics and Applied Language Studies in New Zealand. The words from this list were selected because they appear with great frequency in different academic sources. And there are also, of course, many different language lists that were put together by lots of language enthusiasts from all over the world, and they are specific lists for TOEFL and IELTS tests. They can be found online, but again, the majority of words from these uh, test-specific lists are already in the more popular lists that, that I have already described to you. I personally am of the opinion that the academic word list is the best one because it reflects the academic words that are used primarily in IELTS and in TOEFL. And they are also broken down in sections, in 10 sections, depending on the frequency of their usage. You can download this academic word list using the link that is already in the description box below. So we've talked about word lists, right? You remember that that is the first way of learning words and expanding your vocabulary. Then another way is learning words from context. I personally strongly prefer the second way of learning words from context. Let me show you how this works. So when you learn words from a word list, you have to read a bunch of different unrelated words, write them down, translate them, check their pronunciation, and in the end, they never stick in your memory. It's very hard to memorize lots of words like this because there is no logical connection between them and our brain thinks that we are just showing something inside it and it rejects to get it. At least this is how it is with me when I'm trying to learn words. But that's a completely different story when we are reading an interesting book, listening to a gripping podcast, or studying a captivating article. We follow a certain story while doing that, and we also imagine things in our head, we create images, and for our brain it is just easier to form those neural connections for the new words and memorize them, because we already see them in context. So I strongly prefer this method of working with context and with different media sources. And the last crucial thing that you should definitely do is to move your words from the passive vocabulary to the active one. We indeed know a lot of words. Many of them we recognize while reading or listening, but then we fall short of words when speaking or writing. Have you also noticed that? That's the difference between our active and passive vocabulary. Because in the passive vocabulary, there are always much, much, much more words and we can recognize them while like listening to some music or a podcast or reading something. And we uh, always go like, oh, I know that word. But when it comes to reproducing the those words and trying to express your ideas, it's always much more difficult to use the words that we have in our vocabulary. What I recommend doing is trying to engage those words from the passive vocabulary in your real life. So try to stop yourself from time to time and describe what you're doing in English. Also trying to use those words that you have in your passive vocabulary and drag them kind of to your active one so that it becomes gradually more and more normal for you, usual for you to use those words in your daily life. 
So we have discussed the size of vocabulary that you need to have, the ways of improving your current vocabulary and how to drag those words from the passive vocabulary to the active one. Thank you so much for watching. And if it was useful for you, please smash that like button. Now I'm going to take that vocabulary test. I'm actually a bit nervous because I'm very interested what kind of a result will I get. If you also want to follow along and watch me taking this test, then definitely click on the card there and let's meet in the next video.